Hey everybody, welcome back. Ruben with Texas All Water Fishing, and today we're going to be talking about lures, saw plastics, and fishing techniques. Now, I love fishing with saw plastics. They're some of the more, more versatile lures that you can find. They come in all different kind of shapes and, and sizes and, and body styles and color. Some have rattles in them, some come with scent. Um, there, there's really no limit to some of the lures that, that a lot of businesses carry and that's on the market. And I have come across very few saw plastics that uh, can catch fish. They all can catch fish. They're all designed for it. All right, so today we're going to be talking about five techniques that are common and basic techniques that you use for uh, for fishing and catching fish with saw plastic lures. Now, if you're new to fishing with saw plastics, or if maybe you just need a brush or a refresh, well then this is the video for you. One thing you have to keep in mind is that fishing with lures and fishing with soft plastic is not as complex and complicated as a lot of people think, and, and you may well think as well. One of the easiest techniques to use and simplest techniques and most effective techniques is the straight retrieve. Now, this is my number one go-to technique when I am fishing for reds, when I'm fishing for red drums, especially in the marsh, especially if I see that they're feeding and they're active, I will simply cast my lure over to them, pass to the area where they were, and I will let it fall to the bottom and then straight retrieve my lure past them. Now, you can fish it slow, you can fish medium, you can fish fast, but keep in mind that most of all these lures are designed to move on their own. So the less that you do sometimes is the more, especially when you're fishing, uh, especially when you're using these, these swim lures, these swim baits. And also keep in mind, I have to remind myself this quite a lot, is to slow it down. Remember, you cannot, you can never fish too slow. Slow it down. All right, number two technique is the retrieve and drop. Pretty much simple what it says. You want to cast your line out there. You want to cast your lure out there. You want to let your lure drop to the bottom. And when it drops to the bottom, you want a slowly retrieve it, give it one or two cranks of your reel, and then let it fall back down. That should normally take one to two seconds, and then you lay, leave it on the ground for one or two seconds, or on the bottom one or two seconds, and then you retrieve it again. And that's going to let that lure raise in elevation in the water column. And one or two cranks, drop it again, takes one or two seconds, wait one or two seconds, and most of the time the fish are going to hit it on the fall, as that lure is fluttering and designed to do and do what it's designed to do and it falls to the bottom waiting one or two seconds it's their fish are going to strike it on the fall or they're going to strike it when when it touches the bottom uh, i've catch reds this way i catch specks this way i catch flounder this way i mean it's very very effective and very simple to do all right number three is lift and drop very similar to the second technique but instead of your reel doing the cranking this is going to be done by your rod first you want to cast your lure on let cast your lure out let your lure hit the bottom you're having your rod tip at nine o'clock you want to raise your rod tip to 11 and what that's going to do that's going to when you raise your rod tip that's going to raise the lure so the lure is going to come up and then you lower your your rod tip back down to nine and your lure is going to fall and that's going to take again that's going to take one or two seconds and uh, retrieve, get the slack out of your line, letting that lure fall, let it rest for one or two seconds, and then raise it again to 11 o'clock and drop it back down. Again, that's going to move. Your lure is going to do this throughout the water column and getting closer and closer back to you. Don't forget, you always want to give one or two seconds what's on the bottom because what's going to happen is the same thing as the other technique. It's going to cause a reaction strike. It's going to cause that fish to restrike either when it's falling or fluttering down the bottom to the bottom or when it's sitting and resting to the bottom. That's one of the most times you are going to get that reaction strike. So be ready. So that's why it's always important to get that slack out of your line as it's falling down because when it's falling, you pull that slack out of your line when you're lowering your tip, 
because you don't want to miss that strike. You don't want to not fill it, and you don't want to miss the opportunity to set in that hook. And both methods, when you're reeling and dropping and lift and drop, those are great techniques to use for an ambush predator. Those are a lot of techniques that I use when I am fishing and, and trying to catch a flounder. All right, number four is the drag along bottom technique. You simply cast your line out, you let it hit the bottom, and when it hits the bottom, you want to give it one or two seconds, and you want to drag your lure and keep your lure in contact with the bottom at all time. So you're going to retrieve your lure, and then you want to pause, you know, give several cranks, and then pause and let it let it wait and pause for you can pause from anywhere from one to ten seconds a lot of times this technique is a technique that i use when it is extremely slow and i'm dying for a bite i might have slack tide or high pressure for whatever reason the bite turns off so this is a slow bite technique that i use a lot and it can get you quite a lot of fish and, and and really bring out those lows of the day but like i said you simply cast your lure out you let it fall to the bottom slow retrieve it let it wait one or two seconds or sometimes even up to 10 just depends how slow that bite is and then retrieve it again dragging it on bottom and then wait several seconds and then retrieve it again what this is doing is that you're gonna you want more of a reaction strike out of the fish um uh, when you're dragging it on bottom, what that's going to do is that's going to stir up some of that mud or, or sand or silt that, that's laying down there. And it's going to look like a small bait, a crab, worms, even shrimp. It's going to make it look like they're digging around and feeding. So that fish that has been reluctant to bite out of any of the other techniques that you have thrown, out of any other lures that you have thrown, it might cause them or it will cause them. It should cause them it's like ringing the den a bell you're going to pique their interest you're going to gain their interest they're going to go over there and investigate and then while you pause they might take a bite or while you're getting ready to start retrieving again after it sits still they might take a bite and you get that reaction strike and then boom set your hook all right so the fifth technique that we're going to talk about today is the twitching and jerk now this technique is great to use when the fish are active when there's blow-ups on the water where there's bait flying around with that at right at the right moment when you have the sun coming up the, the everything is at the great conditions sight casting whatever this is it's already going on it's active you can smell you can smell the you can smell the specs it, it, this is very very active fish twitch and jerk because why you can cover a lot of water you can fish pretty fast you can fish pretty quick and you can really hone in and get those fish while they're active so what you simply do is when you cast your lure out there you let your lure fall down to the bottom and then you give it a quick twitch a quick jerk and that's going to make the lure go through the water columns jump out of the water columns pretty fast and then letting it fall back down give it one or two seconds lowering your rod tip reeling your line in letting it lure fall back down give it one or two seconds again because they may be on the bottom right so you let it fall back down to the bottom get down there give it one or two seconds give a pause quick jerk quick twitch and all these techniques most of these techniques especially this technique can be used to fish in all different water columns so if you're fishing in three to four feet of water and you see all the activity happening happening on the top well then cast out let it fall one or two seconds without letting it go on the bottom give a quick twitch quick jerk let it fall again so you keep it in that water column that you want to fish so typically i like to fish a lot on bottom uh, typically there's a lot of fish activity on bottom but if you are experiencing where you see all those top water blow ups then yes get it out there quick twitch quick jerk get that lower your rod tip let it fall let your lure fall down get that slack out of your line quick twitch quick jerk cover a lot of area you can capitalize on those active fish as soon and as quick as possible now one of the things that i will mention is that your size of jig heads really play a large role in your presentation to your fish the the presentation of your lure to the fish if you have a heavier jig head it's going to fall a lot quicker if you have a, a lighter jig head it's going to fall a lot slower a lot of times the fish want to see a slow fall you keep it in their strike zone as long as possible and 
a lot of times if you're fishing with a heavier jig head and you're not getting any kind of bites then you got to change it up all, everything that i've told you is all can be changed up and it needs to be changed up i'll go from light jig heads to heavier jig heads i'll fish with a weed list especially if i'm fishing on bottom if i'm dragging it on bottom just to keep myself out of some of those rocks and those oysters from getting hung up and snagged it's always a great idea to be able to care it's always a great idea to carry different sizes of jig heads even weed lists different shapes different sizes of lures different colors because you want to change this up as many as, as different variations as possible because maybe they don't want black maybe they want white maybe they want white with red flakes maybe they want white with silver flakes you know these fish are real finicky a lot of times and you're trying to really just zone in and hone in at what they want so Having those different styles, different colors, different body types, different jig heads, it's really going to make difference of you catching a fish and, and not catching a fish. But the number one thing that you need, the number one thing that's more important than all these techniques combined is patience. Because patience will catch you fish and catching fish will give you confidence. You know, that is what we talk about a lot of times when we're talking about being confident in a lure is also being confident in yourself. So get out there, learn your spots, learn the areas, whether it's incoming or outgoing tide. What is the best lure to throw under those conditions? What is the best time for you to be fishing in that area? Time on the water is key. Patience is key. Confidence is key. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do. I really appreciate this. Give uh, give the video a thumbs up if you do like the video. And let me know. Let me know what are some of your go-to lures out there. Not just for me, but for those that are watching and those that may be new to fishing. Uh, do you have a go-to lure? Do you have a go-to color? Do you have a go-to jig head? Do you have a go-to technique that you like to fish? As for myself, I fish for flounder a lot, so I'm always on bottom. I love fishing for reds. But I won't shy away from the specs either. It's using that jerk and twitch method really helps a lot for those guys as well. I hope you found this information helpful. And I hope next time you catch me hooking up. Thanks.